drills these days are immensely powerful. More powerful than the corded drills we used in the past, they can do tasks quickly and effectively. But these drills, while powerful, can be a real workout. So maybe you want something lighter, compact, but still has a little bit of power. That's where these drills come in. I've taken three of the leading compact drills and we're gonna compare them and test them to see which one is the best. Here is the compact Ryobi OnePlus HP brushless drill driver. The Ryobi is part of the OnePlus HP brushless line. The Ryobi is sold in a kit with these black two amp hour standard batteries. The model number for the Ryobi is PSB DD01. The Ryobi has 23 clutch settings before the drill setting. The light for the Ryobi is at the base of the drill and stays on several seconds after the trigger is released. The Ryobi has a two speed gearbox. It has a ratcheting chuck. With a two amp hour battery, the Ryobi is eight and five eighths inches tall and six and a quarter inches long and weighs three pounds, 0.9 ounces. This drill is part of DeWalt's Atomic series of compact tools. The model number is DCD794. The DeWalt has 15 clutch settings and a two speed gearbox. It has a ratcheting chuck. The light is located at the base of the tool and stays on a significant time after the trigger is released. The kit includes a two amp hour battery. The DeWalt is eight and one eighth inches tall, five and seven eighths inches long, and weighs in at three pounds, 3.7 ounces. This is the Makita brushless compact drill. The model number is XFD15. The Makita has a two speed gearbox. The Makita has 20 clutch settings, not counting the drill setting. The Makita chuck does ratchet. This drill comes with a 1.5 amp hour battery. The light for the Makita is located above the trigger and stays on several seconds after you release the trigger. The Makita is eight inches tall and six inches long and weighs in at two pounds, 13.5 ounces. Let's see what each drill produces as far as RPM, starting with Ryobi on low speed. Ryobi in high speed. Ryobi's lowest working speed. Makita, low speed. Makita on high speed. Makita's lowest working speed. DeWalt on low speed. DeWalt on high speed. DeWalt's lowest working speed. Now we're going to test and see how much rotational force or torque each one of these drills can produce. We're going to do each drill in high speed first. So the Ryobi produces 42 inch pounds of torque in the first run. Now let's go to the second run to see if she can improve on that number. Down to 41 in the second run, so let's see what she does in the third run. So the final run sees us up to 43 inch pounds, the best for the Ryobi on high speed. So let's move on to the next one. Next up is the Makita to see if it can do any better than the Ryobi. So the Makita's first run is higher than any of the Ryobi's runs at 46 inch pounds of torque. Here's run number two. So 
So the Makita goes up even higher at 48 inch-pounds of torque to best its first run. So let's see if Makita can beat both these runs on its third and final run in high speed. And the Makita does make its best run at 52 inch-pounds of torque. Now let's move on to the DeWalt. Now this DeWalt drill is a very popular drill, so let's see how it does on the high-speed test. Off to a very good start. That's already the highest torque number from any of the three drills in high speed. So let's see what it does in run number two. Very consistent and great job by the DeWalt coming in at 63 inch pounds in the second run. Now let's see what it does in its final run. Great job again for the DeWalt at 64 inch pounds. It's definitely the most powerful drill as far as torque of the three in high speed. But what about low speed? Back with the Ryobi on low speed, we should have a little bit more torque now that we have a lower RPM. And as you can see, the torque is much higher than in high speed. When it's geared down, lower RPM means that torque goes up. When the RPM goes down, let's see what the second run looks like. The Ryobi makes a big jump up, goes up to 162 inch pounds, but can it keep the momentum in the final run? Back down to 147 inch pounds, but not bad for the Ryobi Compact. Let's see what our Makita can do in low gear. And here's our first run in low gear. Makita comes in a little bit lower than the Ryobi, but that's okay. The Ryobi had a lower torque in high speed. Makita's got a lower torque in low speed. So let's see what happens on run number two. Okay, so now we're cooking with gas. Makita's back up there into 130, so we're creeping slowly toward Ryobi, possibly to take her down. Let's find out for sure right now. Nope, not quite for Makita. Ryobi remains in first place on low speed torque, but we have the DeWalt. The DeWalt was a bear in the first round, and perhaps the DeWalt's going to be spanking people in the second round. Let's find out. Okay, Big Boy did good in the first round. Let's see how she does in low speed. You gotta be kidding me. So, 202 is a lot more than everybody else. So, so far, DeWalt's winning in spades. So, let's see what she does in her second run. Will it be more or less? She got even more. 225 is just a ton of torque coming out of this DeWalt. Both low speed and high speed, the DeWalt is shining in this test. Let's see that last run now. The DeWalt is a straight up beast, and it's going to be hard for these other drills to prove themselves more worthy than this DeWalt, just from the sheer torque of this drill. So we have all three drills side by side in this next test, and there's five three and a half inch construction screws lined up. I want to see how these drills can fire off these construction screws on high speed. So we're going to get some practical application here and then we're going to move up to a higher torque practical application next the 
But DeWalt continues to shine coming in first. And then the Ryobi and the Makita kind of tie for second place there. Really close. But this next test should separate them a little bit. Now drilling in a construction screw, it ain't hard. So we're going to try some spade bits working up to larger and larger bits and an auger bit to see how fast these drills will go. Ryobi's up first. <laughs> Ryobi comes in at 49 seconds, able to drill all the holes, had to switch down to low gear, of course, for the bigger ones. Let's check out the Makita. So the Makita comes in nine seconds faster than Ryobi, which is a pretty significant win right there. But what about that Brutus DeWalt? How will it do compared to these two guys? That was pretty close right there. I do believe the DeWalt might have had it by a fraction of a second, but they come in in a dead heat around 40 seconds. So the DeWalt and Makita, number one here, Ryobi number two. So for each drill, I've compiled some data and I've made some equations, which are immensely complex and unexplainable, that will give each drill a score in different areas. Let's start with the Ryobi. For size, I created that aforementioned equation to produce a size score of 18 based on its length, width, and height. When it comes to an RPM score, I took into account the high speed, low speed, and the lowest working speed, and the Ryobi gets a score of 19. The Ryobi had a great benefit of having a great low speed control. When it comes to torque, Ryobi was trading blows with Makita, having a low-end torque of 150 inch-pounds and a high-speed torque of 42 inch-pounds. That came out to a torque score of 19. The Makita is marketed as subcompact, and it really proved itself with a size score of 23 based on its smaller measurements and weight. The Makita had great low-end control just like the Ryobi, not quite as good but almost there, and got a performance score of 19 for RPM. The Makita traded blows with Ryobi, like we were saying before. It had a lower low speed torque, but a higher high speed torque. So drilling those fasteners is going to be a little quicker and maybe a little bit slower on some of the bigger stuff. It got a total score in the torque area of 18. The DeWalt didn't get quite the score the Makita did for size, but it was pretty close at a 22. DeWalt's very compact, very lightweight, and a really great tool to have. The DCD794's trigger control, when you're trying to go real slow, is what hurt it here. It got 40 RPM as lowest working RPM, which brought its total RPM score down to 18. But me, like a lot of people, are willing to trade that low speed RPM for the massive torque 
that this monster put out. 219 inch pounds in low and 64 in high were both best in this group, and it got a huge torque score of 28. So who wins this thing? Let's find out. So let's start off with Ryobi. Ryobi had a total score of 56. Makita comes in just a little bit ahead at 60. But old DeWalt, and my personal pick is DeWalt, by the way. It was a great drill, very powerful. The most full size of the compacts as far as power. DeWalt got a 68 to lead the pack by a significant amount. So, do you guys and gals out there agree with my assessment? Put it in the comments. And there's another reason why you should put it in the comments. And we'll get to that in just a second. But I enjoyed this drill. I want to impart that it had a lot of power, even with that 2 amp hour battery. I can only imagine if you strapped in the power stack, how well it would do. But as the kit is formed, that's how we tested today. And in my opinion, DeWalt was the king. But before you check out, check this out. This Makita is pretty sweet. And I want to give this Makita away to somebody who comments on this video. If you put a constructive comment, that means you say something positive about the review, negative about the review, an idea for future reviews, a tool you'd like to see tested, just something constructive. I may select your comment to win this Makita, which I will announce on the next video. So don't forget, leave that comment. Make sure you leave a like on the video and make sure you are subscribed because that's qualifications to win. I know you want to win, guys and gals. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys on the next one. God bless every one of you. You might not know this, but I have some other channels, including a mad science channel, which I do older vintage tools and all sorts of unapproved builds. There's also a shorts channel where I put up short form content like Instagram, except I don't go there. Or maybe one of these two videos right here and or a playlist will do it for you.